The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Brunch Talk with a Dateable Podcast. We are here to answer all of your burning questions when it comes to dating. How's your brunch going? Huh? What are you eating? What are you drinking? <laughs> I love brunch. I don't know about you, Yue. What is your go-to brunch? Uh, I hate brunch. I hate brunch food, okay? I can't stand eggs. I don't eat eggs. I can't stand toast. I think it's like so overrated, but I do love the idea of brunch brunch. I was going to say, I feel like I've gone to with, with you to brunch so many times. So that's actually yeah. shocking that you don't like it. But maybe I haven't paid attention to what you're ordering enough. <laughs> I like the brunch event itself. I just don't like brunch food. I just find it so basic. But I can definitely get behind a good brunch talk. And you and I have had many <laughs> steamy brunch talks where we leave like five hours later, you know, <laughs> ready oh, to have. change the world. <laughs> I remember like going to a brunch once with some other people too. And they're like, I feel like we're on an episode of Dateable right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and maybe many people don't know this. The first time Julie and I really spent some time together was at Julie's birthday brunch. Oh, yeah. I was so honored that she invited me. She had just met me and it was like with all her closest friends. We went to Chubby Noodle. In yes. the marina. <laughs> it was a bottomless bottomless drinks and bottomless food brunch. That was it actually shut down. Doesn't exist anymore. I know. It doesn't. <laughs> but I saw one. I think there is one in Cabo. Yes. I saw a chubby noodle Stop. in Cabo, Mexico. And I almost texted you because I, I was telling my partner, I'm like, this is where Julie and I really connected. <laughs> a chubby noodle. That's so funny. I think there's actually still one in North Beach in San Francisco, but they never did the brunch. They oh, never did that only one. the marina. Of course, yeah. only the marina yeah. would do the bottomless. So <laughs> we'll end there with our, <laughs> our own brunch talk. But let's get into this question. And this question is, why does my ex keep coming back even though they've expressed that they're not interested in being in a relationship with me? And just a little bit more background. This person says, my my ex and I dated for three months and we were we just DTR'd and they suddenly said that they were not interested and broke up with me. But, you know, it's been six months since and they keep texting, calling, commenting and liking I swear there is a month rule that people always come back a month later. Always. <laughs> they resurrect. They totally do. It's. I think this can be one of the most challenging part of a breakup, too, is that you're finally coming to terms with this being over. You probably went through the mourning process yeah. yourself, and yeah. now they're back, throwing a wrench, giving false hope that this is going to be back to how it was. Why do people do this? I think a lot of times it comes out of loneliness and selfishness mm -hmm. and a need for attention. And some of the things, I think there's a reason why they usually pop in back, they pop back in about a month later is because the dust has settled. You know, maybe they thought they'd be better off single or they thought they would pursue something else or they just couldn't handle the emotions of a relationship. And then a month in, they realize, oh, I actually do miss this person mm. and I do want this. But then oftentimes I've seen from experience and experience with friends and people we've talked to is even when they come back, it becomes the same shit again. It's Always. like there's a momentary fix of being together and there's that high and euphoria rush. But then after that dies down, the same feelings that broke it up in the first place come right back. Yeah. Listen, we can spend hours <laughs> trying to figure out why your ex keeps com coming back. OK, but none of it is real because we're not your ex. <laughs> we don't have your ex on this show. So this is a complete waste of time to try for you to even figure out why your ex keeps coming back. The best thing you can do right now is to think, what do I want out of this situation? Do you want your ex to come back? If you want your ex to come back, is this time for a conversation of 
listen, I, you keep like liking my stuff, com- commenting. Are you trying to get back together? And if so, how are things going to change this time around? I think that's yes. a very key conversation to have. If you are done with your ex and you're ready to move on, cut that shit off <laughs> now. Cut the cord. Block them. Tell them never to to text you again. Tell them not to communicate with you. I mentally murder all my exes. I just like don't want to talk to them ever again. Sever the ties. This has nothing to do with why they keep coming back. It has everything to do with whether you want them to come back or not and how you want to take that action. Yes. I think a good point is what conversation are you having? And, you know, we always talk about it, communication is core, but a lot of times when this happens, we just play a story out that they want to get back together, and that's the reason they're coming back. And that may or may not be true. Like, it could be like I mentioned, they're they're lonely and they're just looking for a fix. Or maybe they really have realized that they made a mistake and they're ready to do things differently. But just assuming that is when there usually ends up being that disconnect of reality and expectations. Oh, the assumption has gotten me in trouble so many times. Same. (laughs) <laughs> oh, the time that the ex, that the one I thought that got away, came back and started emailing me and Facebooking me and messaging me. I thought we were going to get back together. I told everyone that I was about to enter into this <sighs> relationship I had been fantasizing about for so long. And all he wanted was just a one night fling. That is all he wanted. But in my mind, I played out this story of us like getting married, having kids, oh my God. <laughs> buying a house together. Little did I know. <laughs> Oh, this dude was just, like you said, lonely, probably just got out of a thing himself. And he's like, hey, you know who can- I can hit up? UA. I'm going to hit her up. <laughs> Fuck with her. No thanks. Uh- I'm making all these sighs and comments because I feel what you just said way (laughs) too freaking hard. (laughs) I can think of definitely a situation. I mean, I had an on again, off again ex for, I don't even, I'm like embarrassed to say how long, but it's like close to five years this happened that there would be times like this. So I totally feel what you're saying. And, you know, even if it wasn't a one night stand with him, because it wasn't like that, Mm -hmm. it would just become the same reason why we couldn't be in a relationship. It would be this cycle of we would, he'd reach out again. It would be like a month that we dated and everything was great. And then the same shit would come back a month in. And it was that over and over again. So there's that. But I also had this experience a long time ago. I have mentioned this guy before that, you know, he always said like he wasn't ready to be in a relationship right Uh now. He didn't have time. He was a workaholic. He was the one that was sending me emails from his work account all the time. (laughs) I brought this up on the workaholic (laughs) episode recently. And he would, after he basically I like told, revealed my feelings that I really wanted a relationship with him. He basically said like, I'm not in the place. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, then I need to cut off communication. Like I can't keep doing what we're doing here. Yeah. And I don't know, a month comes by, he's sending me articles of like random tech stories. Like it wasn't even flirty. But in my my mind, I was like, oh, he he changed his mind. He realized what was (sighs) wrong. And he never even asked me to do stuff again. Like it wasn't even like to get have a one night stand or get some benefit. I really think it was just like an ego thing. Like I just want to see if this person will still respond to me. It's the same thing as vanity swipes. Mm-hmm. Right? You're like not trying to date all these people, but you just want their attention. That's what a lot of people do. So again, like we don't know why someone wants to come back and reach out to you, but the only thing you can control is how you digest that information. How do you want to move forward with your life knowing that this person keeps reaching back out to you? And I think getting clarity is so important. Like we just said, the assumptions get you in this danger zone. Oh, my God. You don't want to be there because you're just going to get your feelings hurt. Can we talk about Instagram for a minute? Because I feel like... deep liking? Yes. No, I feel... Well, that too. But I feel like this is even the lowest level of reaching back out. Oh, yes. Is liking an Instagram post or watching a story. Yet people get so hung up on that that it means something. Yes. That, oh, they're watching my story 
story, like there's still a feeling or they want to maybe come back and retry things. And I, I really think it's just us projecting what we want to happen on this interaction. Yeah, I just saw this meme that was that said something like, I don't even like posting Instagram stories until I got an ex that I want to get back. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. People are posting stories specifically for the people they're trying to like reach out to. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. But yeah. I agree. That's just so level investment. And for you to take that one like or one view to mean a whole lifetime of happiness, it doesn't make any sense. No. I really like what you said earlier of what is it that you want from this? Mm -hmm. And I think, one, you should always have the conversation of what's actually changed, because if nothing's changed, then it's just the definition of insanity, just the same thing over and over again. But if you have really got into a place that you've healed from this relationship, and they co them coming back is very triggering, it makes you clam up getting that text message, or becomes this topic that you just can't stop talking about at brunch, I think mm -hmm. that's like a good barometer, too, of how much is this actually affecting you to know about like how important it is and it is a decision of maybe sometimes choosing yourself first than even engaging yeah. with this person and so much of it is layered into the history of the relationship that's beyond what we can discuss here because every situation is unique but let's say like you did have a relationship that had a lot of problems and it wasn't a relationship that you know clearly there was some good or you wouldn't have been there at all but you felt like you weren't treated the way you should be or this person you know wasn't a good communicator when there was conflict or whatever was lacking that actually is something that is essential for a long-term healthy relationship some of it is the strength to just ignore when this mm -hmm. when the ex comes back because this is kind of the ultimate test of like how much am i going to put myself first when it comes to relationships yeah that is so true and it's so telling of where you are in that getting over your ex process and we could be so far ahead and feel like we're so over this person but it just takes one text to make your heart drop i've heard oh, i've felt that yes. You know, just that one text from that one person and you go, fuck, <laughs> my whole world is shattered. I thought I went through all this work and I, I'm over this person. It just takes one text to trigger that back up. So it's really about building the the strength and and the bravery to come out of this as opposed to reading people's minds because you just can't. <laughs> Okay, so let's say you decide you don't want to engage in this. What do you actually say to them? I actually think it's a good idea to have something pre-written if you feel like you're going to be tempted. I mean, I know for me, I struggled with just ignoring the text completely. That's like my own thing. And a lot of people feel this guilt that comes over. So maybe you're totally fine ignoring it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. But if you are someone that needs, that feels bad and you want to get something out, I used to have like kind of something that was pre-written that was like, hey, we've had this conversation before, like we've mm -hmm. agreed to, you know, that we we agree that this relationship actually just isn't going to work out and what's best for both of us and what we both don't want. Wishing you the best and just like hopefully you can understand why I'm not responding. I think that's very cordial. I think that's like a very nice thing to do. I, I do believe it's better than ignoring because we don't want to ghost people, especially if they're asking us a question over text. But I also feel like if it's just simple, hey, how are you doing? I just answer it. Great. <laughs> just one word <Yeah>. answers. <laughs> kind of like get the hint. You know, I'm not falling for your trap. If it's something more complicated, like, hey, how's it going? I've been thinking about you. I think that calls for exactly what you are saying, Julie, like a more a more robust explanation of like, we've been through this. I don't think we need to have this conversation again. If they're just simply liking your shit, block them. Yeah. Just block them. You don't need to see that. They're not even reaching out to you. That's just disrespectful. Right. right. I think it just, it goes back to how much is this affecting you? Yeah. If you get a, hey, how are you? And it's really like, oh my God, this person's back. Like, what do I do? 
and it's better for you to just shut it down, I think it's okay to shut it down right then. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling like that, then yeah, engage in whatever convo makes sense for you. And of course, this also goes for, you know, if there's an ex that reaches back out that you're like, oh, I just I'm okay being friends with and I have no feelings. We're really talking about the ones that get you under your skin. (laughs) So if that's the case, then of course, just engage the way that you want to. It's for these people that, you know, it's actually fundamentally bothering you and getting Mm -hmm. in the way of moving forward. Let's say you do want to engage with them. You do want to talk to them. You do want to figure it out. What do you do at that point? We've kind of outlined some key talking points, asking how things are different this time around, asking what is it that they're after. It is so important to take control of the conversation versus being like, I just want to hear them out. That's when they get People are very good with sales skills and they'll they'll get in, they'll get the emotional um, pull here and they'll try to get you back into their web. Take control of the situation, take a hold of the conversation, ask, what is it that you're looking for? And if we are going to do something again, how how are things different this time around? Uh. I think the biggest mistake I met, made was just meeting up with them in person. Oh, and don't not do that. having that conversation don't do because that. then, you know, the drinks start flowing, uh-huh. the emotions come back. Oh, and it, yeah. You're just not even having that logical convo. Knowing what you want ahead of time and framing it is so important. And, you know, maybe it is just picking up the phone because I do think mm-hmm. having this through text can be difficult too is what you what they mean and what you read might be different also. Right. I think sometimes you can interpret things how you want to interpret it versus what it actually is. And listening to tone, taking things at face value, not trying to convince yes, someone key. otherwise. All of that's really important. And You know, if they're just kind of wishy-washy about like getting back together or what their intention is, like that means that, you know, they haven't really thought this through. They're just reaching out because of one of the many reasons we said, you know? That is so key. A lot of them have not thought this through before reaching back out to you. So listen to their words. If their words stop at, I've been thinking about you, that means absolutely fucking nothing. No. It just means (laughs) they are lonely. They've been thinking about it. That's, That's it. If their words seem to be different than the last time you spoke, I've been thinking about you and I've been thinking about ways I can work on our relationship. That's a different scenario. But stop listening to the, I miss you. I've been thinking about you. I told, I was been talking to my friends about you. I thought of you the other day. Those words are just empty words because it does not signal change. It just signals the fact that they've been thinking about you. That is it. Right. It, it is a fact. They might miss you. They may be yeah. thinking about you, but it doesn't mean that anything is going to change. And while it's nice to hear someone misses you or someone's yeah. been thinking about you, ultimately, if your goal is to be in a long term relationship, that isn't enough. Nope. It is definitely not enough. And I've fallen for that so many oh, times. Oh, they've so been thinking about me. So many times. So many times. Too many to count. <laughs> And then you have to, you know, rewind and think, what was the reason for the breakup? Most Mm -hmm. of the time, the reason for the breakup is not that they don't like you or they don't have feelings for you. It just means they don't want to work on a relationship with you. Right. I think the also the worst is when they reach out because they're the one that ended it. And now you're the one that's doing all the work to repair this. Yes. That's a sign too. Like if they were the one to end it, they reach out, they should have a plan moving forward. Yes. Fuck that. No, I think a lot of us, I definitely fell in this camp, was more like em- empaths, right? Like people mm. that really care about, you know, like almost feel like hurt when other people are hurt. Mm. So I know like when I've had exes that, you know, maybe things ended because they just weren't in a good place, like professionally, personally, whatever. I would always want to make sure I was still there for them, even though we weren't together. Yeah. And looking back on that, I'm just like, why didn't I put myself first more? And that was a real struggle was to 
actually like look at it like what is actually best for me in this situation because I think there's a side of it that maybe you know you just weren't ready to actually let this relationship go but then there's a side of I still want to be there for them and I still want to respond I feel guilty if I don't respond to them reaching out and getting over all those thoughts too is really important for this because at the end of the day like what is going to help you have the relationship you want to have (sighs) That's a brunch topic right there. (laughs) Ask everybody at the table now. (sighs) Ask that question now. That's more important than why did they reach back out? Anything yes. else we want to say about this topic? Any, I We love to hear your thoughts at home, too. Has this ever happened to you? I would guarantee that it's happened to most people. Have you ever been the one doing this? I'm also guilty of that. <laughs> so what were your motivations when you did it? Well, Loneliness. Let's step in for that. Loneliness. And also, okay. listen, It's I think it's like human nature to want to go back to something that feels familiar. Mm-hmm. So let's say you move to a new place or you get a new job, you move into a new apartment or whatever. You want to go back to what feels familiar. And a lot of times that means like going back to the person that you spent every day with for a, a, you know, a certain amount of time. So I remember I moved into a new city. I felt a little bit uneasy. I was lonely and I started reaching back out to my ex with no intention of getting back together. I just want to I just want to hear from a familiar voice. Yeah, I've even heard stories of I just saw something that reminded me. Oh, and yes. Yes. I, there was no reason even behind my reaching out. It was purely oh. just, you know, something that kind of came second nature. Oh, guilty. Guilty. <laughs> I walked by this house and it was green. It remind me of your eyes. You know, like whatever. <laughs> whatever excuse. Yeah. Okay. So lessons learned. Don't overanalyze the interaction. Communicate. Ask what's going on for them. And put yourself first. What is it that you want? That should be the question. Bingo. That's it. All right. We're going to wrap up this episode of Brunch Talk. Thank you all for sending in the questions. If you have more questions, DM us. You can go to datablepodcast.com and just send a message to us. We want to get all of your questions answered by the end of this year. That's our goal. (laughs) (laughs) At datablepodcast on Instagram is also a good way. And Love in the Time of Corona is our Facebook group. Wonderful. Have a lovely brunch and we'll see you all next week. Enjoy. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. Mm-hmm.